What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Fibble Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to Deadline Day. Chelsea's Deadline Day disaster class? I certainly hope not and people are still speculating that Chelsea will make a big move today. Now, I don't want to get too excited but this is something that I've maintained throughout the last week or so. I've talked about Chelsea's deadline day habits and journalists and people are still talking about how Chelsea are indeed still intending on making moves. So we're going to talk about the striker situation. Recent developments actually in the Dries Mertens saga. Is it a saga now? Or transfer story? Hashtag justice for Giroud, who <laughs> is trying his hardest to get a move out of Chelsea so he can have his final chance to lead the line for France this summer. And it's looking very, very difficult. Of course, Frank Lampard's always maintained his professionalism, but I'd kind of understand at this point if maybe he went on strike. I mean, I shall never condone that. The point being, I feel bad for the guy. Edison Cavani looked like he could stay at PSG now to the end of the season before going to Madrid. And Chelsea are being linked with Slimani, so there is that. There's your Ashley Barnes of the transfer room window. Anyway, before we do get into all this exciting content, please do subscribe to Football Therapy. If you're indeed new to the channel, hit that bell notifications icon. Please like this video to help me out. All right, let's get into it. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that this is not the only video I will be posting today. Yes, indeed, Chelsea and Deadline Day are like an epic comedy. <laughs> right, let's just get Slamani out of the way because, you know. Yes, that link was coming. He was being linked round of other clubs. Chelsea won a centre forward. I read this rumor link online and I thought, no, thank you. Why is this happening again? I think literally there's just someone in some media outlets out there that released this information for jokes. Like, tell them, say they want Ashley Barnes. Chelsea want Ashley Barnes. Now it's Slimani. For my money, you don't push a World Cup winner Olivier Giroud out the door, trying your hardest to bring back Premier League reject Slimani to play in your first team. It just doesn't happen. So hopefully I can pour cold water on that rumour and we all pray that it never happens. Yeah, so Edison Cavani obviously wanted to play more football this season. He has his heart set on a move to Atletico Madrid in the summer, but it did look like Chelsea were negotiating pretty hard to try and bring him to Chelsea for six months as a stopgap and essentially to offer him a new experience and promise him new football, new football, more football until he goes to his new club. He's struggling to get game times behind the likes of forwards Di Maria, Neymar, Icardi, Mbappe, there's a lot. So Chelsea would offer him a chance to play more, play in the Champions League too, maybe even start in the Champions League. But I don't think it's going to come to pass. I think everything's pretty much died down with the Cavani rumours, even if Chelsea is still trying to negotiate a move for the big Uruguayan. So before we do talk about the Dries Mertens developments, of which there's been a few, let's just talk about Olivier Giroud. Chelsea's third choice striker. Maybe not even that if Frank Lampard does look to play Pulisic down the middle again. Now, I really rate Giroud, I think he's got a lot to offer and obviously the France manager Didier Deschamps feels the same, he wants to start him in the Euros in the summer, but for him to do that there's the mandatory re requirement that he play some football leading up until the tournament, which he just simply won't do at Chelsea. Not even as a second striker, Michy Batshuayi seems to be the second striker at Chelsea, a lot of Chelsea fans actually think that's wrong and that's unfair. Um, I get because he's more mobile than Giroud and I just don't know but Giroud when he has been on the pitch for Chelsea under Frank Lampard neither of the backup strikers have been good but to be fair Giroud has looked worse but I kind of don't necessarily want to fully judge him on that but you're at the point in the season now where you don't have time to give strikers loads of time to integrate so I get how it probably can't work for Giroud at Chelsea. So what's the point in keeping him here? Frank Lampard did explain before how he'd only let Giroud go or the club would only let Giroud go once all parties are happy and he also said in one press conference, I forget which one but you can look this up, he did say that getting a new striker in wouldn't be the depending factor on letting Giroud go and apparently they've all shaken hands and made an agreement for Lazio and I mean both clubs and Giroud for Giroud to go to a Lazio for a three and a half year contract that would be perfect for him, he gets to start for France. So why haven't we let him go? Suddenly, all the news outlets are reporting that we will only let Dries Mertens, Mert <laughs> we will only let, he's coming next, we will only let Olivier Giroud go if we get someone else through the door. So it's a little bit unfair, 
people are reporting that he might actually go on strike, which I'm not sure how I feel about. All throughout this sort of saga, Lampard has maintained that he's been super, super professional. But the autumn years of his career is now dependent on this move. Not just that in club football, but playing for France. He's won the World Cup, he's got a chance to win the Euros consecutively, consecutively leading the line and maybe even scoring a goal this time. I get why Giroud would be really, really frustrated and really I'd just be like, let him go man, just let him go. All right, well obviously that will be developments throughout today. We'll have to see what happens. Keep swinging by football therapy. I will of course keep you guys updated throughout the day. Right, Dries Mertens. You've seen the videos recently of me talking about him. I have been waxing lyrical, as I often found saying, about this player and how I think personally he is the perfect stopgap, whether it be six or 18 months for Chelsea to play in the front three, number 10 striker role, to be a role model for all the wingers and indeed Tammy Abraham as a young striker. Hey, why not even Mason Mount and then young number 10s as well? He's the perfect guy to come in, lift the quality of the attack and you know, teach the other players around him. You should watch my older videos on Drews Mertens. I did a video saying why he's perfect for Chelsea. I talk about how he's a really good and positive character and he'll speak all the languages to speak to his teammates and he speaks English so he'll understand Frank Lampard's instruction immediately because bearing in mind, he'll have to slot right in and know exactly what he wants to do in the remainder of the season and there's not much left, there's only a few months. So he'll need to be able to do all of that and he will. So. I'm a big fan. Now people were speculating first, like why would he want to, to go, like he's four goals off the all-time scoring record for Napoli, which is huge, um, and his contract's up and into the summer, so he could just try and do that move on. But it's an interesting development, because um, we figured, or I certainly figured, De Laurentiis might want to sell him to make some money on him, because he's going to either let him go for free, or make five, six, seven, eight, nine million pounds, maybe even more for him this January. Now, De Laurentiis doesn't have a good relationship with Chelsea. He didn't like it when we sort of coaxed Sarri away, and I kind of get that. And apparently he's a really notoriously tough negotiator, much like Daniel Levy of Tottenham. He's like the Italian Daniel Levy, which is a horrible thing to be called, I guess. But, interestingly, Julian Laurence has published a couple of other news outlets and journalists have said actually Dries Mertens would be interested in the Chelsea move. For me this was the biggest stumbling block, certainly something that I've said in the previous videos that I'm not sure he would want but apparently he is interested in the move. Maybe Chelsea have got on his ear, offered him a bunch of money and a new experience, opportunity to play, lead the line, you know all this kind of stuff. So maybe the scoring record isn't so important for him anymore. I know throughout the last season or this season there's been a huge controversy at Napoli with the players, the fans, the ownership, and it kind of just all imploded. So maybe he's like, you know what, I'll always remember my time here. I want to get out now. He probably likes the idea of coming to play where Eden Hazard played for so long and was adored. He probably thinks, well, that's nice. My little short Belgian friend also had a lovely time here. I fancy a bit of that. Really good mates with Jorginho. I know Michy Batshuayi. Yes. I fancy the Chelsea transfer this January. Fine, great news. I'm down, we're all down. He seems perfect. Oh yeah, back to De Laurentiis. <laughs> now this is the hard part. He's rejected two Chelsea bids, it's been reported. Uh, the first I think was all about seven, seven million pounds. Maybe the second was eight. So Chelsea are gonna apparently come back today with a final offer. Now it's been reported that this offer is an offer he can't refuse, which is just straight up godfather, isn't it? So either they're gonna threaten him with mafia gangsters or they're gonna give him loads and loads of money and who knows, maybe even a player in return. At the moment, I can't say what this offer is because I don't know. I can only speculate like you guys that maybe, probably, it's a lot of money. <laughs> like I said in previous videos, I think Chelsea should offer even up to 15 million pounds. Considering what he would offer Chelsea moving forwards, considering how much money they've made in transfers and how they haven't used any of said transfer kitty this window and they're saving it for the summer, they should at least spend 15 million pounds this January window to ensure they do qualify for the Champions League next season. And who knows, have a better run in the cup, have a better run in the Champions League, all that can be enforced by the inclusion of a little Dries Mertens. But like I said, it's deadline day. I'm reporting this to you now. I'm gonna get this video out as quick as possible. But by the time you're watching this, I might be filming the next update video with some new information on players. Who knows, 
it could happen. We may still end up with Slomani leading the line and depression season has finally begun. Anyway, positive thoughts. Chelsea have been known to do transfer business on deadline day and the noises around the camp and journalists are that Chelsea are willing to make this big final offer to get someone through the door and to hopefully free Giroud, justice for Giroud, all that kind of larks. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, if you guys have enjoyed this content today, please do like the video and remember Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new. Um, I've stopped doing live streams for the moment on this channel, but I am doing live, live streams on Instagram. So if you want to come and uh, say hello in the evenings when I'm streaming, follow me on Instagram. That is at Football Yannick on Instagram. Make sure you follow. It's the same on Twitter. Remember to stay positive, guys. Lots happens on deadline day. Doesn't mean we're out, down and out. Even if we don't make transfers. Chelsea's still an important place to come back from injury, and they're six points clear in fourth. Let's not be too sad if nothing happens, but of course, keep checking by Football Therapy all throughout today, and I'll keep you updated. All right, you lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby